beautiful people. Welcome back. I hope you guys are all having an amazing day today because y'all, I am so pumped. We have got so many good new drugstore things to test out in this video. And I'm extra excited because actually quite a few of them are questions and recommendations from you all. Like first up here, we've got this new primer from Wet n Wild. This is the Impossible Primer. And this was um, actually recommended, I wanna say, was it in my month end favorites? It was from maybe two-ish weeks ago, but I picked this up off of your recommendations. So we're gonna test that out. We're also gonna test out the new CoverGirl Outlast Extreme Wear Foundation, which this one, I wanna say three-ish people have asked me about, wanting to know, is it good? Can we test it? Even a first impression. So I figured we would throw it in here, see how it looks and all the good things. Um, and then I also picked up this, which obviously there's a couple more things in here, but these, these are kind of the main hot ones. And especially this one, you guys, this is the new Fall Scara from Kiss, which I have seen viral between, you know, TikTok, Instagram, whatever. But basically, it's a false lash kit where you take these little pieces of lash and this false scara here is supposed to make it so you put the lashes on the underside, like right up here, and then it's supposed to blend. You don't even need mascara. And it's just supposed to be like, oh, you know, overall this amazing experience. I'm just gonna say right now, okay, the thing that I hate the most about false lashes, like the most in this world, is the glue, like trying to get it on there and then I have glue all over the damn place. I'm sticking to my fingers. I stick to my eyelashes. I rip them out. And it's a whole experience, right? And this is supposed to eliminate all of that. It's supposed to be quick and simple, and I am just beyond excited. So we're gonna obviously, like I said 15 times, we're gonna test this out. All right, guys, so just kidding. Surprise, it's gonna be a little bit more of a mixture video between high-end and drugstore, because I was just looking through the box in front of me that has the drugstore stuff in it, and come to find out, there is not as much stuff in there as I thought there was. Like, there's not enough to keep the video interesting. So what I'm gonna be doing is throwing in some high-end stuff that I haven't tried as well, first of all, and then on a couple of other things too, I might even throw in like an update, you know, where it's applicable, stuff like that. I don't really think anybody's gonna care necessarily that I changed it up, but you know, just a little heads up from me to you. We're gonna be testing out new makeup, talking, doing all the things, first impression, uh, because guys, I really just need a little makeup therapy. I think you guys need some. That's why you're here. Hello. Um, so let's go ahead. Oh, I, actually, you know what? Before we do that, let's pause really quick. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Paige. This is Seeking Alexandria. I, I would love it if you'd subscribe. Turn on your post notifications before you leave, because I do typically upload. I know things have been crazy lately, but typically, Typically, I upload three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, right around 7, 7.30ish a.m., my time here in good old northern Michigan. So we have bright early morning uploads. And then also, too, if you haven't done so yet, please make sure that you are following me over on Instagram. Not only am I trying to hit 10,000 followers over there, but I do put up a ton of content. That is where we interact the most. I do everything from makeup to plus-size fashion, OOTDs. We do unboxings and, you know, new makeup launches, PR, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, we also just kind of hang out. That, 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 for me, is where we build the community aspect of of YouTube and where we just get to have a little bit more one-on-one -on -one behind the scenes time. So make sure, um, again, that you do that. Everything will be linked down below and I would really, really appreciate it. But with that, let's go ahead, let's zoom this camera in and let's get going, woo. Actually, you know what, pause really quick before we do that. I wanna mention, um, normally going into these videos, I really love this off the shoulder look, it's so cute. Um, normally, <laughs> sorry, going into these videos though, I do link like all the stuff that I'm wearing as much as possible. But just to give you guys a heads up, this is a tank top from Torrid that I don't even know, oh, there's a hair on Sorry, um, I don't even know, or not a hair, a fuzzle. What am I thinking? Um, but this is from Torrid. I don't even know if they still sell it because it's just like an old, you know, rib tank top. This is from Zebo, which is uh, Nabella Noir. It's, it's her brand. And this is currently sold out, so I can't link this, but I will link the website. You should check it out. Their stuff is adorable. I will be able to link, oh, <laughs> you were thinking there was nothing. Um, I will be able to link these adorable little earrings. I just got them. They're from a small business. I found them on Etsy. And I'll make sure to leave um, their link, their handle, store, whatever down below because guys I just got my package in from them and it is so cute like the earrings are adorable I bought two different pairs a little hair clip a little sticker and I'm just obsessed so again I'll make sure that they are linked down below adorable love small business shout out to small business y'all we just gotta love them okay we gotta love on all the small business that we can so yeah let's do that now and, and also with that let's go ahead zoom the camera in and let's get started all right so first up here now that we're good and zoomed in let's go ahead and dive into the primer this is as I said before new from wet and wild and this is their impossible primer and it says that this is supposed to be the primer, the, I'm sorry, the one silicone free primer that does it all. This is supposed to mattify, hydrate, which is interesting. It's supposed to blur pores, prep the skin for lasting makeup, and it is impossibly silicone free. Yes, please. All right, so here's just a little bit on my finger. It definitely looks just like a regular dimethicone silicone type primer. Uh, so I'm just going to take some of it here. Oh, it does feel a little bit more melty though. I can already tell it doesn't have the same slip as a silicone. That is interesting. 
Definitely smells a little bit like coconut. Like there's just a very, very light scent, nothing overwhelming. Also, as far as the texture, if you are familiar with silicones, how not only do they have that slip, they also thin out a lot more. And this one tends to be a little bit thicker. Like I'm feeling, even as I press it like across my skin and kind of move it around, it just maintains that thickness, which on my skin, that's why silicone primers don't work because they're too thin and slippery and they just don't hold anything in place. But this one actually does feel really nice. Like it has a a beautiful amount of, I keep wanting to say girth, girth. It has a lot of girth. I feel like that's not the right word, but also oddly appropriate. Let's go ahead. I want to look at these pores up close here and see how we're, ooh, okay. Y'all, I did not expect, okay, I know on camera it doesn't, I'm like, the, on camera, that doesn't help you guys at all, Um, but this actually looks really good, like right in this region where my pores are ridiculous. My nose, nothing really helps my nose, let's be honest, but this right here looks pretty good, y'all. I'm not mad about that forehead looks good. And I like too that it has more of a natural finish on my skin. Like it's not really changing anything as far as that goes, which is good. It doesn't feel overly dewy, overly mattified, just again, nice and natural. Now from there, let's go ahead and dive into this new foundation. This is again, the CoverGirl Outlast Extreme Wear 3-in-1 Foundation. This says it is full coverage, SPF 18. Um, I have it in the shade 810 Classic Ivory. I just picked this up from Walgreens and it says, oh wait, what the hell? Primer, concealer, and foundation foundation in one for a naturally, that's a, that's a lot, um, for a naturally flawless finish. It has 24 hour wear. It is sweat proof, humidity proof. It covers imperfections, evens out your skin tone. It feels comfortable, lightweight, and breathable on your skin. Holy wow, y'all. That is a lot of claims. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk. Okay. Hell, oh my God. Hello. Oh, <laughs> it's taped. <laughs> oh my God, guys, I'm sitting here and I'm like, why can't I? Oh, there's literally a giant piece of tape across the back. Okay, Paige, think smarter, not harder, my lady. Let's figure your life out here. Lift where it says lift. Oh yeah, look at that, the tape lifts off. What a surprise. All right, so the foundation comes with a pump, not upset there. I'm gonna be using just this little sponge here to apply. And I'm actually gonna start with this one over my like hyper redness right here on my cheek. Oh, okay, coverage, not too shabby. It really doesn't feel like super thick or heavy. It's more of a medium um, viscosity too, which I like. Let's go ahead. Let's maybe, let's maybe not, Paige, get, you know, foundation all over our brand new earrings that we just took out of the adorable little packaging. All right, so I'm kind of shocked for multiple reasons right now. Number one, me with CoverGirl shade matching, it's always a disaster. I don't know why, but I feel like actually just in general for me with CoverGirl, like foundations, complexion products as a whole, I never really am able to get anything that I like from them. Like it just, either the consistency is bad, the formula doesn't work on my skin, the colors are always way off, and this like so far... Looks pretty good. I know I've only got it on one half of my face for like seven seconds, but I'm not upset about that. I'm just gonna grab, you know, a little bit more here and keep working on the face. So far, so good. Let's go. I really like the texture of this and that coverage, like it goes straight to a medium coverage. Like, look at that. That's not too shabby, right? I'm like lightly pulling it down the neck because it is a little bit off, but not too bad. I'm not upset about this and I love the texture. Like on my skin, it looks really, really beautiful. Right through here, you can see it has more of a lightly hydrated look. But with this one, honestly, I don't think I would go any farther with the coverage. Like, I, I love where it's at. Again, it's more of a true, like, hefty medium coverage. But just for the sake of testing the foundation, I do want to see if it's a buildable um, coverage or not. So I'm gonna take just a little bit more here and try to build it up over my red areas. Okay, and it actually does build a little bit. Not too shabby. I think on camera, it's probably gonna pull about the same, but like both of those areas, it built up a little bit. So I'm not mad about that either. It didn't build the texture, which is good. All right, you guys, so hello. Obviously we're very close. Sorry, sorry about the abrupt situation, but I wanted you guys to get to see the texture of this on the skin while it's up close because it actually looks really, really beautiful. Like the overall press is nice. I love the the coverage. I just, I don't know. I have no issues, like nothing to complain about. It's not streaky. It wasn't too thick to spread. It built up nicely, no issues. And I still really like the fact that it has like a nice healthy glow on my skin. Like I wouldn't say that it's a glowy foundation necessarily, but I think it makes my skin look nice and healthy. And I'm really interested to see how all of this translates, like all of these, you know, little features, how they go after I've added powder and whatnot. 
because so far it actually looks really pretty. All right, so obviously I went ahead and I zoomed the camera back out, and right now I'm just going in and running through a couple of other products, starting with concealer to shape out the face a little bit. This is the Wet n Wild Incognito Concealer in the shade Fair. I actually just repurchased this one from Ulta like a week or so ago because I ran through my entire other um, other full bottle of it. Actually, you know what? Since I'm not going to get into it, I'm going to go ahead and link the favorites video. It was either December or January's favorites video, but I'll link that up here if you haven't seen it yet because uh, in one of those videos, I talk about this concealer at length and how great it is. And if you have any other questions, just make sure you check it out because it is... Oh, honey, it is worth it. When I say worth it, honey, I mean, like, put your thing down, flip it, and reverse it. <gasps> Y'all, this concealer, like, mixing in with that foundation, bitch. A bitch. Who, who, who am I? Who says it like that? A bitch. It's not like I'm vomiting. But that... Paige, get your life together. Guys, I just love the way this looks, okay? I could just be a normal human and say that. I love the way this looks. Paige, is that so hard? No, but also here we sit. All right, now from here, as per usual, I'm just setting my under eyes and my T-zone with my one size setting powder just to make sure everything is nice and locked into place. All right, so I'm just going through and doing a little bit of a touch test for those of you that don't like to set your foundation prior to setting mine. And I have to say, this has actually dried down pretty nicely. I am getting light transfer. And at this point, it's been drying down for, I would say, roughly four-ish minutes. So that's actually not too bad. I think that you probably could get away with not setting this if that's not your thing. And you'd actually be able to keep like that natural finish on your face, which isn't too shabby. But as per usual with me, you guys know, if you're new here, you might not know, but I always have to set my foundation powder. So I'm going to go in with the Fenty Pro Matte Foundation Powder. This is in the shade 150, and I am just very, very lightly. I'm not taking very much product at all because it really doesn't need a lot to be set, and I obviously don't want to overset it and make it look all dry and cakey. All right, so next up for bronzer, we're actually going to dive into our first update, and that is going to be using the Physician's Formula uh, Face Palette. This is their all-star face palette, and I am going to be using the traditional Maru Ru 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 Butter Bronzer right up here, and I'm going to be taking that on the Eco Tools Bronzer Brush. And with this palette, really what I wanted to update were on the individual shades, starting off with the new matte bronzer right here, and because I did have a lot of questions on that one after I used it for the first time, like how does it look, how does it wear, and for me, the main issue with that shade that I found is actually the tone of it on my skin. It just pulls really, really orange, and I think on camera you can see a light difference between the two. This one is just a little bit more toned down than this one right here. This one kind of makes me look like carrot cake, if I'm being honest. And so I can't really use, again, the matte one, but I still do love the original. And then also after the bronzer, I wanted to give a little update on both of these as well. This is the Rosé All Day Petal Glow, and then this is the Powder Palette Mineral Glow Pearls. And this one for me was, I think, the biggest letdown of the two. I did go ahead and swatch both of them right here. This is the Rosé All Day one, the deeper, and then this is the one that has like that white overspray to it. And for me, the reason that this one was such a bummer again between the two is that um, I think the white spray like the white overcast kind of threw me off because looking at it you can kind of see where I swatched it the white is what it was like solid when I first opened the palette and so for me I thought that that was going to be like the main color the main thing that you saw like it was going to be a nice bright white highlight that I could use to top a cheekbone inner corner you know brow bone highlight something like that um, and then instead when I went and swatched it what ended up happening is of course the overspray goes away and you're left with more of just like a sheeny powder Powder, which by itself it's actually really pretty but unfortunately on my skin tone it is a little bit too deep to use as like you know just a glowy highlight but it is something that I can get a little bit of use out of if I use it on just like a no makeup day you know kind of gloss it over the cheeks type situation that does look really pretty but again as more of a targeted pointed highlight I can't really use it and for me in this palette because I am so fair that was going to be really important because this highlight right here which again is the darker of the two over here that one is so much deeper than my skin tone um my original original thought was that I would mix the two together and be able to have a highlight, which again, it's kind of a bummer because I can't do that. And at this point, I do like these two shades on the end right here, but I don't have enough of a like definitive thought to give you. So I'm going to still, you know, withhold my, <laughs> withhold my right to change my mind on the palette as a whole. But so far, I would say that I'm like half in with this palette, half out. Like I'm kind of, hey, I'm, st I'm still trying to find where it fits perfectly, like in my makeup routine, because I don't hate it, but there's also aspects of it that I don't love either. You know, like it's kind of a half and half for me. So 
also too, this palette was sent to me. I try to say that verbally um, in every video, but if you're ever curious um, if something is or is not sent to me, I note everything in the description box, but I always try to say it verbally as well. And this was sent to me by Physicians Formula. So just, you know, interest of full disclosure, just so y'all know. All right, now for blush, I'm just gonna go in with my Catrice blush box here. This is in the shade 040 Berry. And guys, I know I've said it a thousand times, but if you have not tried these blush boxes from Catrice, oh my God, you are missing out. They are so good. They're so, so beautiful. Like as just as a face powder to drape over your cheeks, especially if you have texture, you know, you struggle in this area. They're just gorgeous. Oh my God, this blush is gorgeous. And still my skin, by the way, looks fantastic. Still no issues. Except for my crusty, rusty little lips. Okay, I got, I got to get rid of this foundation situation. I'm looking all kinds of uh, crusty butthole and I do not live, I do not live for the crusty butthole on my mouth. So I'm just gonna take and get rid of that. All right, now next up, going into brows, I'm actually gonna grab the ABH uh, Brow Freeze Little Clear Gel here. I've actually been using this quite a bit. And I'm gonna take this on the same one actually in the video where I tested it originally, which I'll link up here. This is the ABH number 14 brush, which again is what I'm gonna be using today. I'm just gonna grab a little chunk of it here and work it into the cap. Now for this one, I haven't been using it as long, but I still want to give you a little bit of an update. I've been using it pretty much every day, actually, uh, since that video. So for me, that's about, if you guys watched it a week ago, it's about a week and a half to two weeks for me. And I actually really like it. I love the way that it does fluff up the brow, which is great. It's still, um, even though it does, you know, kind of stick it straight up and, and, you know, gives it that nice electric socket look, it still is really easy to work with. You can still shape your brows, which is nice. All right, so next up, I just opened up a brand new one of the Milani Weekend Brow. This is in the shade 140 espresso. And um, I did buy this in the wrong shade. Normally I go a shade or two below this one because, um, oh wow, that is so, so dark. Yeah, my hair is definitely not that dark. Um, so this one is going to be a little bit more hit or miss. I'll have to work with the shade and hopefully try to make it so it doesn't look so dark. But uh, this isn't new. I've talked about it a thousand times. I love this product. And if you're into these brow flicky things at all, you will absolutely love this. So highly recommend. Nothing to update on there. All right. So next up, I picked up one little quad here from the Colourpop and Animal Crossing collab. Just one little quad because I couldn't help myself. Guys, it is so, oh, so damn adorable. I don't even play Animal Crossing. Like, I don't even know what this game is, but all I can tell you is that this packaging, oh my God, it is so cute. I grabbed it in, is it Five Star Island, I think is the name of this palette. And it is so precious. Okay, this is, well, excuse me, that, that's not gonna help. Um, it is the adorable little pink one. Looks a little something like this. And I am gonna be doing, I think just something really light today. Like, I don't want to have, you know, any crazy, crazy overdone eye, but I just wanted to, you know, debut it, show it off a little bit, because I think it is so damn cute. First things first, let's start off by swatching this little bad boy. It looks like, ooh, not too shabby. It does have a pressed glitter in here. This is in the shade Island Designer. And as far as the rest of the shades go, I just want to briefly run through them here. The yellow shade over here is just a regular shimmer. The pink is a matte shade. This one is, of course, the glitter one I already mentioned. And then the one on the very end here, the deepest shade, is actually a matte glitter glitter hybrid, which for me personally aren't my favorite kind of shades because I find that most of the time the glitter ends up falling out onto my face when I blend the matte. But this one actually does feel pretty nice and the actual like color of it is a really, really rich shade. So I think, you know, definitely we can make something work out of this again on the lighter, more fluffy side of things. All right, so first up going into the eyes, I'm gonna grab a little bit of my Incognito Concealer here, the same one I used earlier, and just use that as a little bit of a light primer as a base. And then for the main shade here that I'm actually going to run through the crease and on the inner and outer V, I'm going to take the shade Island Tune, which is just that matte little light pink shade. And I'm just going to, like I said, run that through here. Nothing too crazy. I don't want to deepen it up. Although I am sitting here wondering why I can't see through. Listen, everybody enjoy. Oh, satisfying. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I was sitting here wondering why I couldn't see out of the mirror and then I realized there was still plastic on it. Super fun. And then just a little bit here on the inner and outer V as well. I'm going to take the deepest shade, same brush, and just lightly, oh wow, there is a lot of kick in these very, very soft shades so far. Uh, but I'm just going to take and lightly kind of pack that. Like I said, inner and outer V. And then just really lightly here, I'm going to throw the lighter pink shade on the lower lash line the same color that I worked through the crease, just for a little bit of color. And then right in the center, I'm gonna take the shade Isabel. That's the um, fun little yellow shimmer here. And I'm not gonna grab any glitter glue, but I just wanna take and lightly kind of veil that one all the way up toward the brow bone. This'll really help to kind of lighten the intensity overall. 
with the look. Like, it just helps kind of open everything up. I'm actually just going to take two and throw a teeny little bit of that on the lower lash line right in the dead center. Just to kind of blend it in with that pink, you guys, that is the cutest little sherbet, like, light pink yellow moment. This, for me, would be a very, like, everyday spring eye look, and I would absolutely love it because it has so much brightness, but it's easy, and it's just fun. I really like this. All right, so next up really quick here, I'm just going to set the face. This is the It Cosmetics Your Skin But Better Setting Spray. Now, next up for a highlight, I'm going to be going in. This is going to be an update of the Catrice More Than a Glow Highlighter. This is in the shade 020 Supreme Rose Beam. It's actually a beautiful, beautiful color. And by the way, I tested this out, or I talked about it in like a testing new drugstore, which I'll link up here. And if memory serves, this is actually one of the items that for whatever reason, while I was filming, oh my God, look at that. So good. Um, when I was filming, this part like got cut out or something, like there was an issue with the camera. And so I told you guys way back then that I would come on here at another point and give you guys a better application and more information. And back when I first applied this, I know you didn't really get to see much on camera before, but back when I first applied it, my main issue was the texture of it because it is a little bit thicker. And what I noticed was happening was that over the like apples and more textured areas on my face, like right through here, it was looking a little bit heavy, chunky and it was just really accentuating you know all of the texture that I have. So back when I filmed that video I realized that I needed to go in with a different kind of brush like a buffing brush or just something that I could use to really work it into the skin a little bit more as opposed to um, you know just lightly throwing it on top and so uh, today I'm going in with this one I don't think I can link it but if I can I will. This is from the old um, Tarte Rainforest of the Sea collection this is just like a duo fiber angled brush and uh, this brush works really really well with this highlight or just highlight highlights in general for me that I have to like buff into my skin because it has just enough of the contact with your skin that it lets you really get it worked into your texture but at the same time because it's a duo fiber it's not like too intense or too dense on your skin but with this highlight moral of the story um obviously it's beautiful it has more of a you know beaming look to it so if you're wanting more of a natural wow if you're wanting a natural highlight definitely keep that in mind you'll have to work it in in light doses but if you are into you know this level of intensity if that works for you, which I love it. I think the color, the tone, you know, the texture with this type of a brush, everything works great. And uh, I've been really, really, really enjoying it. I've actually worn it a ton. Um, you can see on here, there used to be an imprint in this pan and I've just beaten it all to hell. So obviously the highlights to go and I'm going to take a little bit here and do my inner corner and my brow bone as per usual, just to really help everything pop. Oh God, it's so good. All right, now next up, just to seal everything in, of course, I'm gonna go in with a little bit of my Catrice Dewy Glow Setting Spray. Mm. All right, guys, so now we are officially on to the main event. We are going to play around with this Kiss Falscara set, and I'm going to go through and actually read the package with you guys. Obviously, if this part's boring, you can skip through it, but I want to make sure that we go through all the steps together so that way, you know, if I, if I miss something up, we all know kind of what not to do. So it says here, okay, step one, if you can mascara, you can Falscara. Ooh, I like that. Uh, again, step one, bonding time. Brush a light coat of bond on the natural lashes a little goes a long way. By the way, we're gonna read through all of these and then do it. Okay, step two, wisp under lashes. Use the included falscara applicator to pluck a wisp from the tray. So this is the applicator it comes with. It's like a regular falsies. And then I'm gonna be plucking away at little sections of the mascara or the little uh, falsies up here. As shown, pick up a wisp from the middle outer end. So, you know, out to here. Uh, for optimal control and application, one by one, gently place the wisp under the base of your natural lashes, so on this side, slightly away from the waterline. Okay. Seal the deal. Dab on a thin coat of seal under the wisps. This final touch eliminates any sticky residue and holds the Valscara, the Valscara wisps in place. Okay. Pro tip one, apply the wisps starting at the outer corner of the lash line working inwards um, or vice versa. Be sure to place the wisps right next to each other for a seamless look. Okay, that's fair. If needed, use the applicator or your fingers to squeeze the wisps against your natural lashes. This helps them adhere for a more secure hold. Again, just like with regular lash lashes. And then pro tip three, for to prolong the life of your applicator and your wisps, after use, wipe off any bond residue with rubbing alcohol or makeup remover with gentle care, they are reusable. Okay, perfect. Which also, I'm not using them today, but I mentioned them over on Instagram. 
Instagram. I'm going to be using these here in the near future. These are the Ardell Naked Lashes, and it says blend seamlessly with the Invisiband. They're just like a really, really light, again, natural lash, and I am so into this look. And also, just to mention, I know you can get this Falscara, like this right here, by itself, because you can, as I was, you know, talking about with the other lashes, this made me think of it, you can use this interchangeably with other lashes or other items in your collection. So if you have a lash that you prefer, but it's a pain to put on, this is supposed to be like a multi-use across all platforms kind of thing. So you can buy this by itself. It's right around $10, but I obviously grabbed the kit because this is what they had at Walgreens, and it was, I think, $18 or $19 right in there. Um, but again, this by itself is $10. It came with the lashes, and it also came with the tool. So I didn't think that that was too bad. I mean, and, and I think, too, it was part of like a buy one, get one kind of sale or something. So I ended up getting it, I'm sure, on some sort of a sale. But just FYI, as far as pricing goes, it didn't seem too outrageous. So first up is Bond, right? Yeah, Bond. James Bond. Bitch, I like it shaking, not stirred. Okay, so let's go ahead. I'm, I'm like kind of nervous and I don't I don't think I should be nervous but like here I sit nervous so let's take a little bit grab my mirror and take a little bit of the bond gel and we're just gonna take it says a little bit goes a long way so we're gonna go roots to tips brush it through let's take how do I want to put these on like this right is that correct? Nope, that's completely backwards. Okay, can you tell how often I put on lashes? Never. So my first one's on. I'm just using this to pinch it together. I will say, first lash I put on is a little bit crooked, but we're not gonna talk about it, okay? I'm, I'm very stressed right now. So let's grab another little whisper. All right, so at this point, it's been a couple of minutes. I have on two sections, which I know this is riveting material. And um, what I'm noticing is that the bond adhesive, because it's taking me so long to get these damn things out of the package individually, um, the bond adhesive is um, drying up a little bit too quickly. I'm actually gonna have to go in here and apply just a little bit more. And I know that this is uh, not something you're supposed to have to, you know, obviously go in and add. So what I think is either A, normally I would be applying these like with a regular strip lash and it would be a one and done type thing. But with this, just be mindful. It might take you a little while to get the hang of it because it's definitely taken me a hot second. All right, let's press that together and don't you dare come off. Oh my God, it came off. Okay, all right. New plan, guys, new plan. Um, instead of these stupid individual lashes that I cannot get to stay on my eyes, no matter what, we are gonna try on the other side the uh, full-on strip lash here, these little naked ones, and see if this is any easier because the concept itself is very easy, but I cannot get these little godforsaken individual lashes to actually work. So instead, we're gonna try this route, and I'm gonna try not to lose my patience. <laughs> it's already gone. Like this one, I might need to trim down just like a little teeny tiny Bit. All right, so going in on the other side, I'm taking the bond adhesive, applying it to the entire lash band. And going in, I'm actually just gonna use my finger and try to place this on because everything keeps sticking to that stupid applicator and it's really pissing me off. All right, guys, so I think I officially have one lash on. And the first thing I can tell you is, oh, wow, they actually look really pretty. Paige, who is this bitch? Um, okay, so first things first, let's, let me get into the nitty gritty, all right? I'm gonna be honest, I think I needed to trim these lashes a little bit. So they do hang down just a freckle. I don't know how well you guys can see them, but they do hang just a little bit here. Uh, so don't mind that, that, that that's a me, you know, situation. That's not an issue with the product. Now I'm gonna go into here and do the other side while, while I talk, but as far as the actual product goes, which this side definitely has a little bit more bond on it than that side did. So, you know, whoops for me. I hope this side uh, still works. But as far as the product goes, I actually really enjoy the concept. I think that um, this is a very innovative approach to lashes. The only part that I'm struggling with, again, aside from getting the damn things out of the container, um, my main thing is making sure not to set the lash band too close to my waterline. Because like on this side, it is too close to my waterline. I can feel it kind of tugging on the inner portion right there. And so, you know, just for application, be mindful of that. Like, be mindful of where you're putting it because obviously it's going to touch and hug and, you know, kind of be there all day. All right, so a second side is on, and I actually think 
This side I cut a little bit better and I placed it a little bit farther off of my waterline. So both eyes aren't gonna match. Okay, let's not get crazy. Um, but I do like the way that they look. They blend in really well with my natural lashes and the product itself, God, that is so interesting. It feels so weird to have these on. I have not worn a false lash in I, literally years at this point, um, but I really like it. And I like the fact that they're not riding like on top with all that glue and everything's all goopy. That used to drive me insane. Going in this way, you still get to keep like that nice natural uh, look on the top of your lash, which I really, really enjoy. Like you don't have to worry about going in, hiding it, hiding glue or whatever, uh, which is really good. Like th this way, I think you could actually get a truly seamless, you know, full lash effect. That's really, really pretty. All right, so next up, we're gonna go in with some of the seal coating and this is supposed to remove any and all sticky residue. All right, so it might be almost midnight because it's so dark outside here in the good old Northern MI, but I, guys, I'm surprisingly impressed at how much I like this. Again, application of these is a little bit wonky. Things are kind of moving around. That's a me, I have to get used to it, um, you know, type situation, but I really love the concept of this. And the more that I look at it, I'm so blown away at how natural and like effortless they look on my eyes. The only thing I will say, and this is just a personal preference thing, uh, because I am so used so, so used to wearing it just mascara and I coat it up a lot. These are a little bit more natural than I would normally look on my lashes. But again, not for having to go in and build up the product like that. That's actually pretty nice. You know, especially if you're someone who at the end of the day, you don't want to have to go in and scrub your lashes or you just don't like taking the time to build up all those coats of mascara. You could go in, you know, theoretically and use this with other, you know, maybe Lily Lashes Miami or the new Lunar Beauty Lashes, stuff like that. Stuff that does have, you know, more of a full appearance and you'd still be able to get the fullness of a big robust lash without having to go in and do all the application from the top side which I think is really an interesting concept actually I'm gonna go ahead too and apply a little bit of mascara just to the lower lashes this is the covergirl uh, lash blast clean mascara it's in the little light blue container here I'm just gonna use that down here. Okay, so last but not least, we are gonna finally go into lips. I'm gonna leave the eyes alone. Again, I know that they're not perfect. I'll play with it and kind of, you know, give you guys more updates later. But for lips, I really, really wanna test this out. This is new from It Cosmetics. This is their new Pillow Lips Solid Serum. And it's supposed to be a five-in-one tinted gloss. And it says, wait, where's the info on here? It has skin-loving ingredients or something. Hold on. Uh, yes, glide on to lips for hydration, instant shine, a flush of color without feathering. That's a big claim. And a revitalized lip look. And I also am using this in the shade Like a Dream. So it's one of these little click up situations. I'm just gonna go ahead here and throw it on. Ooh, that feels nice. I love this color. <gasps> oh, that's good. Texture is fantastic too. It's nice and creamy. Okay, so this reminds me a lot of the new um, Charlotte Tilbury, that Hydro Silk lipstick or Hydro lipstick, whatever it was. I'll have it linked down below um, to compare, but this reminds me so much of that. Like just as a first impression. Mm. God, this is so good. And all right, you guys, with that, obviously, this is how the full face came together. I love this look, and I'm actually really surprised because normally, and I might have mentioned this earlier, but normally for me with CoverGirl, um, like foundations and stuff like that, I don't always have the best of luck. And so far, this is looking absolutely fantastic on my skin. Like right through here, the combination of the primer in this, maybe it's one or the other, I don't know, but something is looking so, so damn fantastic. So let's go ahead, actually, and throw up the up close. That way you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about while I work through everything. But uh, yeah, complexion so far, 10 out of 10. I love how smooth it looks. Uh, and I definitely think there is a good balance going on between the primer, you know, smoothing over my pores. I can definitely tell that the weight of that primer does make a huge difference. But then also with that foundation, there's such a nice lightweight, natural feel to that as well. Um, so I think the two are just really, really complementing each other. Now the lips, this is the part that I'm really curious about because so far I am obsessed. I love the color. I love the texture. Like just the way that it's sitting on my lips. I would wear this all the time in every color that they sell, but I'm really interested to see as time goes on if this really is an anti-feathering lip product because normally stuff like this that is on the more, you know, juicy hydrated side, normally that does tend to, you know, feather, especially on my lips, which are super intense and creasy. And I just, I have very crevassy skin. Okay. We've talked about this. Like I got crevassy under eyes. I got crevassy lips. It's a whole thing. And so normally again, something like this on 
on me would crease pretty quickly and, you know, start to feather into my lip lines. So I'm very, very interested. But even without that, I have to say the product itself, I think, is right on trend with where I am in my makeup. Like wanting, wanting more of like an easy to wear, you know, natural looking type lip, but still having that color, the comfort, the hydration, the gloss. I feel like this is kind of a perfect middle ground for all of those things, which I am obsessed with. And I know I've talked about this a thousand times at this point because it, literally the longest part of this video is lashes, but my lashes right now are actually looking really, really good. They are a little off, as I said, because, you know, it was my first pair. I haven't applied lashes in a while, but I can definitely see, you know, if I went through and I critiqued not only the size and, you know, cut, cut them correctly, but also if I went through and adjusted the way that they were sitting, these would be very lightweight, very comfortable, and I could see how, you know, this would be kind of a not even there type lash application. Like, you wouldn't even know you were wearing it, and that is my favorite kind of lash application. So, I will definitely keep you guys apprised with those. The brows look fantastic. Oh my god, I am surprised that I was able to make that color from Milani work as well as I was, because, like I said, it is a little bit too deep for me. It's a little bit too cool toned, but the actual look of my brows, on point, great, fluffy, love that. The eyeshadow is really, really nice. It's a cute little quad from ColourPop, no complaints. And uh, yeah, the other stuff that I used is all stuff that I've tried before. So guys, I have literally nothing to complain about right now, and I am just beside myself. The makeup has such a nice, um, lightweight, kind of natural feel to it, and, and I like it because the feeling of it is lightweight and natural, and it actually matches the application. Like, there's nothing worse, okay, nothing worse than going in with makeup that's supposed to be, you know, light and breathable and airy, but like it feels all kinds of thick and cakey. Oh, I am not here for that. But anyways, you guys, like I said before, I don't have anything else to say, so make sure you're leaving me all of your thoughts down below, whether it is on stuff that you are loving, stuff that I should try, or just on these products in general. If you were curious, leave everything down in the comments. Make sure that you're reading each other's. You know, you can reply to each other's as well. If somebody has a question that you think you can answer or something like that, definitely help each other out too, because that's kind of what the whole comment section is about. And I always encourage it, and I really appreciate it too, when you guys engage with each other, because that way, you know, everybody can kind of learn from each other's experience, answer each other's questions, and it's just really nice to have that support. So make sure that you're checking each other out as well down there. And that's a weird sentence, but um, you guys, thank you all again so, so much for watching. I appreciate it. Make sure you subscribe, turn on your post notifications, follow me on Instagram. Everything will be linked down below, makeup and whatnot included. And yeah, that is all you guys. Thank you all again so, so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And please don't forget to have an amazing day, night, weekend, whatever it is when you're watching this. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Oh, I'm sweating. I'm sweating profusely. Thank God I've got this diet coke to keep me company. <laughs> I don't know what this was. Isn't that a YouTube or a TikTok dance? Ooh, ooh, I like... <laughs> no, just me? Okay. Oh, a nice little peacock feather sticking out the back. Perfect. My lip gloss, it popping. My lip gloss, it cool. I see you after school. Wait, how does that go? My lip gloss, it popping. My lip gloss, it cool. I something, something, something. I see you after school. I sound like Cartman. Ba, 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 poker face. Ba, 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 ba. Vogue, 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 Vogue. I got to let your body move to the music. Vogue, Vogue, Vogue. You know what I just had pop into my head? I'm going Vogue, Vogue instantly. Thong, th thong, thong, thong. <laughs> what? What happened there? There was like a huge wire cross. Let me say that. Thong, th thong, thong, thong. I don't. <laughs> it was a very aggressive thong. Apparently, it's right up the ass.